Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to the last of this year's Christmas recipes. And this dessert recipe is a great alternative to the rather heavy going Christmas pudding. It's light and delicious and is based on the great sticky toffee pudding recipe with a couple of Christmas ingredients in there. And to accompany it, I'll be making a fantastic brandy cream sauce. I'll start by stoning and slicing the dates into small pieces. Right, the first job is to prepare the sticky toffee part of the dessert. In a small but fairly deep saucepan, I'll add the water, followed by the cranberries and I'll let them simmer for two minutes. Once the time's up, I'll add the dates and gently boil it all for a further three minutes. When the time's up, turn off the gas, remove the pan altogether if you're on an electric hob and add the bicarbonate of soda, you may know that as baking soda. Give it a good whisk, it will fizz up a bit, that's why we needed a deepish pan. The soda brings it all together into a sticky mass and that's what puts the sticky in sticky toffee pudding. Now to cool it down quickly, I'm letting mine sit in a sink of cold water while I start to make the butter. Time to preheat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 338 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. I'm setting mine to 150 Celsius as my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. And this is the 1 litre pudding bowl I'll be using. I've already greased and floured it and put a small disc of parchment paper in the bottom as you can see. You can use butter or oil. I've used a little lard or cooking fat for mine. What? I said cooking fat. Right, while the pan is cooling off in the sink, and that will only take a few minutes by the way, I'll get started on the cake batter. It's very simple and self-explanatory so I'll let you watch as I put it together. Just make sure you add the ingredients in the correct order as shown. You can use a hand or a stand mixer if you prefer, but don't have it on full speed. Once that part's done, you can sift in the flour, mix spices and baking powder. This is the mixed spices I'm using. I'll add a list of all the spices it contains in the description box below. There's probably an equivalent product where you live, just listed under another name. I just call it my Christmas spices. Gently fold the flour mixture in before adding the now cooled sticky liquid and fold it all together with a spatula. If you're using a machine, keep it on the slowest setting and only mix it until it comes together. Once it's mixed, carefully get it into the greased, floured pudding bowl. Mm. 
With the base of the bowl being small, you need to sit it in a small tray like I'm doing and it'll be easier to get in and out of the oven too. Now get it straight into the preheated oven which is set to 170 degrees Celsius, 338 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4 and set your timer for 1 hour and 10 minutes. Right, while that's in the oven I'll get the brandy cream sauce made. What I've got here is 300 ml of double or heavy cream, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of icing or powdered sugar and one tablespoon of this Napoleon brandy. You can use whatever you like. Irish cream or whiskey is very nice in this. Or you can just leave it as a plain Chantilly cream with the sugar and the vanilla. Or you can just have it with plain custard or what our USA cousins call vanilla pudding or so I've been told. Okay, what you do with this is add the ingredients all together and whip it up with a whisk until it thickens up a little as shown. After three minutes this is what it should look like. Quite thick but still runny. And that's my brandy cream sauce made. I'll get that covered and get it into the fridge. Right once the oven timer goes off, test the cake with a wooden skewer or toothpick. If it comes out clean, it's done. If not, give it another five minutes. Mine's done, so out it comes. Ok, after it's sat on the rack for 5 minutes it's time to get it out of the tin. First I'll have to slice off the dome so it'll sit on the plate. Now I'll turn it upside down, give it a bit of a shake using a towel because it's still pretty hot and using my little suction cup tool lift it straight off. This is always the nervy part, even for professionals, but if you've greased the tin well it should release no bother. And there you go. Nothing to worry about. Right, I'll carefully remove the parchment paper, then let it sit for about 10 minutes, then I'll transfer it onto a serving plate and cut a slice off so you can see what it's like on the inside. And like I said at the beginning, this is a great alternative to the traditional Christmas pudding, which I find difficult to manage after the main course. But this has a spongy lightness plus the great Christmas flavours of the spices and the cranberries combined with that classic sticky toffee pudding recipe. Ok, here we go. First I'll get plenty of that brandy cream sauce on. You can serve this pudding hot too by the way. And that is absolutely gorgeous and I'm not just saying that because it's my video. Sticky toffee pudding is one of the best desserts to come out of the UK if not the best but this recipe takes it up another level and I really hope you try it. Well nothing else to say on this one apart from have a great holiday and a healthy and prosperous new year to each and every one of you. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.